some of the market drivers? Um, there are, it's not just about replacing petroleum. There's a lot of things we think that, that are, are behind this move toward bio-based plastics. So there's, there's a lot of market drivers, but there's also a lot of market, um, market challenges and hurdles as well. So the purchasing of, of bioplastics and bio-based products has been a little bit on the cautious side, I think. And I interviewed um, Ben at Marvin Windows about this, and I said, do you see using more bio-based product in, you know, in, in what you're producing? And he said, well, we make our windows out of wood, so it is already bio-based. You know? <laughs> so you're going to have to prove to me, you know, good idea, but you're going to have to prove to me that it works. So there's, there are some concerns when we talk to manufacturers and, not, and surveyed them as well. You start to get into some real issues about performance and economics of actually using bio-based bio -based materials in this, in this way. Um, there's, they want to use it as a green replacement for petroleum products. That's their, you know, they, they're talking about, their customers have talked about, they want to be green, they want biodegradable, uh, but 23% of them have, have said that their customers really haven't, haven't expressed an interest at this point. Yeah, so manufacturers are already getting the calls, mm -hmm. uh, and this is, you know, what, uh, the thing, what is behind it. So this is really, I guess, understanding more about what biomaterials can do and helping manufacturers understand what, what it can do for them. Uh, talking earlier with, with one of the manufacturers in the room, and really this is kind of an opportunity to not only focus just on replacing petroleum, but perhaps even creating you know, a market differentiation for a manufacturer to actually become different in some way. Mm -hmm. But not something that can just be, you know, tried easily. There right. has to be a lot of thought behind it. Um, you know, we said, do you know of other manufacturers in your industry that are already using bio-based material? You know, 71% said no. Again, they, they believe in it. They don't have a lot of information. But, you know, they're not seeing a lot of people <coughs> doing it yet. Um, but we said, all right, do you really think that you're going to be using uh, more bio-based material? And it was 65% uh, said, yes, we are going to increase our use of that. So those are people that are doing nothing now and some that already are. So, you know, very consistent feeling that this is something, you know, that they want to pursue. Um, and some of the ways that they, they see using it, you know, just the, you know, the bio, uh, adhesives, biopolymers, bioplastics, et cetera. And some of the products, molded products, definitely. You know, whether it's it's something for um, you know a part for John Deere or whatever, and packaging is on there as well. I think to jump off on that, we may cover this again a little bit later. I think to to a great number of people, um, when they hear bio-based products or they hear bioplastics, they immediately jump to disposable, recyclable. Mm -hmm. That sort of a thing, you know, the stuff that we're throwing away, and they want it to go into some place and just go away. Um, there are some real challenges regarding to that, but what what has emerged out of this report and talking to manufacturers is that there is a huge possibility and potential in durable plastics. I mean, replacing things like countertops and cell phone shells and you know copiers and printers and that sort of a thing that have a long life. And that's really where there's a, a tremendous amount of, of possibility, we believe, and, and the report shows, and manufacturers believe that as well, that durables is really, we need to, to many people's way of thinking, we need to expand what bioplastics means or what bio-based products means. Okay, so what are the, what are the challenges here? Okay, mm -hmm. cost is a, is a big deal. I mean, when you start to, to talk to manufacturers and talk to the marketplace, how much more is this going to cost me, okay? Uh, but eventually that gap has got to close in terms of it can't just be about the price anymore. Whether so, it's perception or reality. Right, right. But price is that standard that, that many manufacturers use to say we're either going to make the switch or we aren't. So a lot of, a lot of particularly now in this economic condition, it comes down to a flinch factor for people. How much is this going to cost me? You know, how much do I really want to pay to be sustainable? How much do I want to pay to be green? Um, and half of those, those surveyed um, said that they, they do not expect material to cost the same. So in other words, you know, they're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting to, um, to grow my involvement in this sector. I know it's going to cost me a little bit more. You know, so they understand that going in. And we ask them, how much more you know, are you willing to pay? And uh, you, know, you can see the percentages up there 
Um, so they, there, there is a measure of reality in that. Anybody who's worked in the biofuels industry, though, knows that what people say they'll pay at the pump for renewable yeah. fuel and what they actually do pay for it entirely different, can be an entirely different thing. Um, so basically we're looking at people not being particularly interested in these economic conditions to pay for something green. Um, economics are also a factor within the ag, the ag economy. And this truly is about uh, you know, trying to transform agriculture into industrial products and petroleum products. Um, so there's a lot of, Tim Gerlach from Minnesota Corn says, there's a high degree of skepticism, but that doesn't mean farmers aren't willing to try it. If there are value-added products that could stabilize the market for farmers, they would have interest. You know, these are generally good times in agriculture right now, um, but part, due in part to the fact that a lot of this kind of work was done in biofuels and other things, what's the next step for, for agriculture? And this, this is probably it. Uh, we asked manufacturers if they prefer to do business with somebody who's supplying on a local level in, in Minnesota. And, you know, yes, you know, that is the preference, but is it a deal breaker? No. You know, they, they will get it. They are committed enough to um, incorporating bio-based material that it wouldn't have to be somebody from Minnesota. Um, uh, and, and although they continue to have a strong interest in using it, they do have some questions. You know, one of the big ones, uh, warranty. A lot of manufacturers have, have had to go through an extensive process with their customers to, be, to prove that their products meet a certain level of quality. If they start incorporating bio-based material, in many cases, they have to start that process over. And so it, it's not impossible, but it's something that they're just saying, okay, that would have to be part of it. And potentially, you know, is it going to, now again, perception or reality? They're saying, is it going to cost me more in my system? Am I going to have to change my manufacturing line? Um, Shoremaster, there are a lot of warranty and personal liability issues with component changes. So uh, to invest in something really expensive, we've got to look at return. So pr again, prove it to me. So you've got, you've got buyers saying prove it to me, you have manufacturers saying prove it to me, but yet everybody's interested. Okay. Again, I think, and maybe part of that is this, is this sense that when people hear bio-based, they think biodegradable and cheap. And so am I lowering the quality of my product by including bio-based products? That's another perception and education challenge, I think. Yeah, 83% of the manufacturers saying, you know, we got, I, I have to be able to meet testing standards or it's a, it's a non-starter. Um, the other thing you've got is a huge investment out of my manufacturing floor. And what's going to happen if I change the feedstock that goes into that? And what, what's going to change in terms of temperatures and processes and testing and all that sort of thing? And so when they start to use a component with a different spec, this, this really kind of puts manufacturers back a little bit and says, what's this going to cost me? How can I even test it within my, uh, within my process without shutting things down or maybe in their minds even jeopardizing? But at the same ability. time, I've got customers calling me exactly. with interest. You know, and that's kind of where this whole thing actually started. Um, this is trying to document how many people are actually using bio-based material. How many manufacturers? 40% said they've considered using it. Um, but haven't done so yet. 26% have already tried using bio-based material and plan to continue. So, you know, it's not a huge percentage doing it right now, but again, you know, strong interest in making it happen. Um, you know, this was uh, from a plastics manufacturer. Until someone delivers something to us that we can experiment with, there's not much we can do. We, push, we have to push back uh, to suppliers regarding biomaterials. So every sector is saying, you know, help me out here. Um, and uh, Jim Lunt said, you know, within, we were talking about suppliers within Minnesota and markets within Minnesota. It says, you know, there's, there's a lot of few, there are very few companies who are actually buying bio-based, but there's a lot that could be <coughs> manufactured here that could go elsewhere. So we'd be looking at a market, obviously well outside just Minnesota, but a, a global market really for bio-based activity within, the, within <coughs> this state. Um, Gary Noble says, don't be afraid of it, try it. Um, if you have a job you're finishing up, run, run some, learn from it. Take an hour or two, throw, purge your machine and give it a shot. I mean, it's going to take that kind of, I guess, experimentation and commitment for manufacturers mm -hmm. to say, okay, I think we can make this work. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the, uh, the fact that when people think bio-based, they think cheap, they think it's going to fall apart. That is not, <clears throat> not the case, and we need to change that through 
<coughs> education and, and outreach to, to manufacturers. This was just announced when? Recently. Just recently. Um, there was a national contest to come up with a, an insignia for bio-based bioplastics and seroplast I think was, was behind that and some lucky University of Kentucky student, graphic arts student, got a $25,000 check for this. Uh, <coughs> unlike the woman who got, what, eight bucks for the Nike swoosh, but this <laughs> is, uh, is a much better deal for this gal. Um, so really, I think this is indicative of this movement to say we, we want to connect consumers with this. Uh, we're not quite sure yet what having this on a product is going to mean yet, but um, clearly there's a move toward being able to identify these things. And, and so I think that's being consumer driven, it's being market driven, uh, it's being economically driven, and this is just, I think, another milestone in the fact that this is where we're headed. The intent is to have this become as ubiquitous as a recycling symbol, that people will immediately know what it is. Um, securing funding is a big deal for the research. Um, Chad Olvin from North Dakota State said, you know, this area of research really doesn't have a home within federal agencies. I mean, there's USDA kind of does some of these things, and then you've got, you know, other groups over here, but there's really no place there, you know, bio-based plastics and materials, kind of an orphan when it comes to, um, to, comes to funding in this way. So you kind of got to be creative in terms of grant applications and that sort of thing. But it's, it's tough. It's, it's a tough thing to do. Um, you've got um, regulatory issues, you know, you've got, you know, what, what does biodegradable mean, really? Um, and if it's not being put through a system where it truly biodegrades, then guess what? You really can't call it that and shouldn't call it that. So there's all of this is starting to happen from a regulatory standpoint. Regulations to some degree are creating a market. Regulations to another degree are, are really causing some issues.